Hello and welcome to how to compile Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. A few of you have asked me to make a brief tutorial just to answer a few questions or just to show the whole process. Perhaps you don't know where to start and it really is quite simple. Um, it's not something you need to be worried about. You don't need any sort of code knowledge. I hope this tutorial will show you in just a couple of clicks how you can get the whole thing installed. You don't need to understand what the computer is doing to compile the code, you just need to be able to follow these instructions. So the very first thing you need to do, head to cataclysmdda.com, from there go to the forums. From the forums you want the garage, bug reports and technical help, and from there you want downloading and running the game. Now in here, the Darkling Wolf has very kindly put together a very comprehensive guide on how to install it on Linux, Mac and Windows. Now I'm only going to be focusing on Windows uh, primarily because I assume that anyone who's running Linux is already going to know how to get this installed and I don't own a Mac so I don't know how to get it installed on a Mac so uh, you're on your own if you've got a Mac I'm afraid. Oh well you're not on your own, you've got Darkling Wolf here to save the day. But coming back to Windows, there are three main methods. The code box method, which is the one I'm going to be focusing on, it's very straightforward. Sigwin, which basically emulates a shell environment for you to compile and run the code from, and minimum GW, which stands for GNU for Windows. Again, much like Sigwin, but we're not going to really look into that, um, if we don't have to, that is. Now, from the code box, you want the minimum GW package. Codeblox is itself an IDE. That means it's a, a development environment, but it doesn't necessarily have the tools as standard to be able to compile the source code. So the minimum GW setup is the one that you want to go for because that will come with the tools already uh, packaged with Codeblox to compile and make use of the code. So go ahead and pick which uh, source you want to download the file from and then you also want the source code itself now you've got two options here you can either download it directly from the github repository or you can download this zip file I'm not sure how up-to-date the zip file is it, I'm guessing it's more up-to-date than the the latest stable release or well as close to stable release as cataclysm gets but it's probably not up to date with like nightly builds or any recent commits to the repository. So it really depends on how bleeding edge you want to get with this. If you're not familiar with GitHub or you just want an easier time, then go for the zip file. And I'm going to be focusing on that because going through how to install and use GitHub is a little bit outside the arena of this tutorial. So we're going to be focusing on the zip file, but for my part, if you do know how to use Git or can find out, it's very much worth it. You will get the latest bug fixes, the latest features, but also on the on the other side of the coin, you will also get the latest bugs. So it, it's a bit of a give and take with that. So here I've got the two files that you're going to be wanting. Codeblocks 12.11 min gw setup and cataclysm dda master zip. Now I've already gone ahead and, and uh, extracted the zip file into this folder which I prepared and as you can see all of the code files, some documents, there are some readme files and things in here. Now they don't have a file extension and Windows doesn't quite know what to do with files that don't have file extensions. This is something more in the sort of realm of Linux so or Linux, I'm never really sure how to pronounce that word. Um, I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments. But if you want to run that and actually read it, just open with a text editor and you should be fine. Now, the, if you don't know anything to do with coding and you're not interested in, in messing around with that, you don't need to pay any attention to the vast majority of these files. This is the only one you're going to care about. Now, I've gone ahead and uninstalled CodeBlocks just so that I can install it in this tutorial. It's a very quick install and we'll get that going now. You can more or less just have all of the default options, obviously if you want to take your time and look through everything, by all means. And you can install to the default location. I won't, uh, just because I don't like having too many things installed on my C drive. So we'll get that all installed now. It'll drop 
shortcut and once this is done it'll ask us if we want to run it we do i've already got gotten the source code where i want it to be so we can just run it straight away so yes i'd like to run it now and we finished with the install now once this opens up we are going to want to open the file i just pointed out to you so let's find that file in here it should be clearly marked so cataclysm win dot cbp and this will open the cataclysm project now again you don't need to know what's going on here at all so instead you can just go ahead and click run oh sorry uh i mean to click build derp i'm already failing at the tutorial you want to click build you don't want to run it from this so put that in now and down the bottom you'll see the build log now this will take a bit of time so be prepared for that it the whenever you rebuild the project especially with a large project like cataclysm it can take several minutes but you want to keep an eye on this log generally it should look like this this just means it's gone through the code it understands it all's clear there are no problems if it should throw up any warnings it'll be in here and it'll probably be in red and that's what we're looking for now personally i've had some troubles with just running code blocks straight out of the box and they come down to the version of the minimalist GNU for Windows that it comes packaged with. As a result, there is something that I have to do. And that is, you go to the SourceForge page for minimalist GNU. I think you can get there from here. If you click on that, it'll bring you to this installer page. Now, if you download this file, this is the installer for minimalist GNU. So I'm just going to minimize these while this is going on. This will take a good couple of minutes. Well, it depends on your system. It probably won't take many minutes at all, but uh, it'll take a little while. Now, this will take a long while, regardless what kind of system you've got. Uh, if you run this, I'm not going to go through that. I've already got this all installed. Um, it does take a long while, so I don't want to record that. It would be a lot of boring watching. But when you set this up, there are some things that I want to go over. Now, the thing that I do here, if you've got time and you've got an internet connection, which I assume you will have, go ahead and download the latest repository catalogs. This will just make things a little bit easier later on. And then you go through the rest of the, the pages. If you go with the prepackaged repository catalogs, it's not necessarily going to be bad. It just means it won't be pulling the most up-to-date tools. And you can just go next, accept the agreement, and then probably the default location, honestly, with this one, or wherever you really want to put it. Now, I'm going to cancel that because I've already got it installed. And we'll get rid of that again. There we go. And in fact, we'll get rid of these as well. Ah, my mouse double-clicking everywhere. Why do you do this to me? It hates me, even when I'm not playing games. Massive troll. Okay. Now, as we can see, we're still going through. We're on the R's now, though, so that's good. Oh, actually, no, we're on the M's, not the R's. I was looking at release. Now, if you open the sources directory tree there, you can see roughly how far along we are. So, yeah, it'll take a little while. We're down to mission. Where's mission? Mission's all the way up here, so, yeah, got a bit to go. Now, the thing with the minimum GW that I was just talking about. If you go into compiler and move along to where were you? Let's find you. Here we are. Now, I have got code blocks automatically using the install that I had. If you just installed code blocks flat out, out of the package without having your own copy of minimum gw installed it would more than likely be using the one that comes with itself so it would have some sort of uh, path to a, a directory in its own install directory now by installing uh, minimum gw myself i was able to tell it to use that and it looks like when i reinstalled code blocks it automatically noticed that i had my own copy 
of minimum GW installed and has decided to use that. So you're probably not going to see the issue that I've had in the past, but effectively there are certain points in the compile where the compiler would just run out of memory because of the, the way the tools it was using were configured to try and build the code. If you have any problem with anything like that, drop a comment um, if you're not clear on how to get through it. But generally speaking, if you install minimum GW and then just hit this auto detect from within code blocks, it will find that you've got your own copy installed and it will ask you if you want to use that and you do. And that's really all there is to it. So, well, oh, we don't want to over interrupt this, but uh, it doesn't look like we have. So we'll let that continue going through. We're almost to the end now. We're on tutorial, which is here. Vehicle interact there. And if you have any other questions about how to get this to run, if you encounter anything I haven't uh, talked about, or, or you've just got any sort of random issue, if it's throwing up any sort of error, if you just want to drop the error in, my, in the comments of this video, I'll do my best to answer that. But uh, understand that I'm not too familiar with code blocks. I'm just using this because it's one of the most convenient options to do this. Uh, so they, I might be able to point you towards the uh, solution, or I might be able to point you towards the right forum to find the solution yourself. But uh, we will be able to work through it together. Now, it's finished uh, doing the code. So if we close that off, we don't need to save this. Nothing there needs to be saved. Now, if we come into the folder where I had everything installed, you'll see that the Cataclysm EXE is there. Now, the data files, all these things in there, they're all ready to go. So if we just hit that, there we are. Cataclysm has been compiled. It's running on the latest source. Now, the only problem you'll have here is the Cataclysm directory that you're now running out of is full of source files. <laughs> and uh, you might want to lift those out instead. I think you're going to need the data file, the object file, the save file. Um, I think that's it, actually. I'm not sure, though. You could quickly check that by downloading just the regular release of Cataclysm, if we bring up their page, and just comparing which uh, directories are in the install directory when you've downloaded Cataclysm. That would probably be the easiest way to, to work out which of these folders you need. But generally speaking, that's all you need to do, and you have now got Cataclysm running on the latest source files. Enjoy. Again, if you have any questions, if anything wasn't clear, do leave me a message in the comments. I am terrible for assuming things are clear and that people understand stuff. Uh, I, I'm trying not to teach my granny to suck eggs with this tutorial, so I might be over explaining things. I don't know, but uh, do let me know if you have any problems and I'll see what I can do. But until next week, do take care.